Every Steam Deck owner knows what it means to be Steam Deck verified, and the Steam Machine is getting a very similar system. What issues do Steam Machine Verified have to contend with? Are they the same as Steam Deck Verified? But before that though, if you like this video or any other videos on my channel, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel helps me in the long run. And if you're looking for more content, be sure to check out Off the Console. It's a podcast started by me, Gardner Bryant, and Games Revealed. And of course, we talk about the latest gaming news and, well actually not just gaming, but also multimedia as well. Feel free to check us out on YouTube in video form, or if you prefer an audio form, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever apps you use for your podcasts. Episodes typically release on Mondays. I assume anyone with a Steam Deck knows what it means to be Steam Deck Verified, or Steam Deck Playable, or Steam Deck Unsupported. But for those who don't know, I'm going to give you a little crash course. The verification system exists to tell players what is or is not a good experience on the Steam Deck. And a lot of it has to do with not just performance, but also console feel as well. Steam Deck verified games should work out of the box without any tinkering required. Of course, you can mess with graphical details if so desired, but it shouldn't be required for a Steam Deck verified game. On top of that though, UI elements should be visible on the default Steam Deck screen. The game needs to have controller support, and of course, Anytime a text prompt pops up that would require keyboard input, the game should either automatically pull up Steam's built-in on-screen keyboard, or provide you like a on-screen keyboard from the game itself. And of course, if a game has an external launcher that launches first, that launcher should be navigable with a controller. And if a launcher requires you to log in and type in your credentials, then the on-screen keyboard should automatically pop up without you having to manually pull it up. That's the ideal solution. The idea is that a Steam Deck verified game that actually deserves to be verified gives you a console-like experience. The game runs reasonably well and doesn't require you to manually pull up a keyboard, even if it is just once or twice. Steam Deck Playable is the next step down and it's a game that runs out of the box. But of course, these games may require a few things from the player. Any of the following can be true and all of these could be required at the same time. For example, a game could require you to scale the UI so that you can actually read things, or require you to manually pull up the keyboard to actually log in or type in something. Sometimes a game may require you to change the resolution to the Steam Deck's resolution, and maybe even lower graphical details to get a playable frame rate. Or most egregiously, a game does not have true controller support, and as such requires you to manually map your controls in Steam Input to play this game. As a result, a lot of games that are mouse and keyboard only are playable on Steam Deck, but Steam Deck playable. Now, this doesn't mean Steam Deck playable games are somehow not a good fit for the Steam Deck. It just means you need to put in a little bit of elbow grease to get it working. And finally, let's talk about Steam Deck Unsupported. Steam Deck Unsupported means a game does not work on the Steam Deck out of the box. Things like Proton Incompatibility, game performance being poor no matter what you do, anti-cheat issues, or simply being a VR-only game can get you Steam Deck Unsupported. And of course, there's a myriad of games on Steam that have not been tested for Steam Deck compatibility and simply have a question mark because Valve hasn't tested them yet. Your mileage may vary. They may work or they may not work. So this brings us to the Steam Machine. The Steam Machine is getting its own Steam Machine verified system. As per an interview with GameDeveloper.com, Valve designer Lawrence Yang says that the Steam Machine verified badge will have fewer constraints. Now, Lawrence didn't really mention what sorts of technical constraints there would be, but if a game is Steam Deck verified, it's almost certainly Steam Machine verified. It makes sense. The Steam Machine is far more powerful than the Steam Deck. Not to mention, the Steam Machine is just a box, whereas the Steam Deck is a whole portable handheld system. Some games that may be Steam Deck unsupported due to things like performance may be Steam Deck verified on the Steam Machine. Games like Starfield or Dragon's Dogma 2 may actually be Steam Machine verified because they would run a lot better on the Steam Machine. There's also the uh, interesting challenge of text and UI scaling, because that is a requirement for Steam Deck verified. But when it comes to the Steam Machine, you'll be playing on many different types of displays. You could be playing on a TV, 
or a monitor or a portable monitor. And let's not forget, televisions can come in many different sizes, which can greatly affect how you see the UI in a game. I could see UI scaling and text scaling being dropped as a hard requirement for Steam Machine Verified. And of course, the situation gets a little more iffy when you realize that multiple monitors have different resolutions. While Valve has said that the Steam Machine will run games at 4K60 with upscaling, I could see Valve basing the performance section of the Steam Machine Verified system based on a 4K system as opposed to a 1080p system. Of course, there's a lot that still remains the same. You still need to have a game that runs well out of the box. You still need controller support. You still need a game to display controller glyphs properly. You need games that require text input to automatically pull up the on-screen keyboard or perhaps maybe have its own in-game keyboard too. And any games that use a launcher still need to have the launcher's controller navigable. By that I mean, not requiring the trackpads to do things. Of course, we have to talk about the issues with Valve's verification system, as it's not perfect. In theory, this is a great system, but in practice, some games are marked as verified when they shouldn't be, and other games are marked as unsupported when they work perfectly fine. Sometimes games that went through the Steam Deck verification system have outdated readings. Let's look at the PC version of Sonic Adventure Deluxe. Some may have issues with the Deluxe changes, but the port appears to technically work out of the box. Even during the Steam Deck's early days, it seems like people didn't understand why this game was marked as unsupported. And truth be told, I don't know why it was either. Truth be told, I still don't know why it's marked unsupported as well. Seems like it works out of the box. The general recommendation is to mod this game to make it look more like the Dreamcast version. But I mean, if you didn't want to do that, the game works out of the box and without any tinkering whatsoever. Yes, sometimes you have games that are marked as unsupported that seem to run out of the box just fine with zero issues. And sometimes you see the opposite of this happening too. Sometimes you see games marked as verified, but then when you actually play them, they run like crap. There are two major examples that really come to mind, Remnant 2 and The Last of Us Part 1. Both of these games released and they were marked as Steam Deck verified at release, but then when people actually played the games, they didn't run all that well. As such, both games were marked as unsupported shortly after. Though The Last of Us Part 1 got some patches and became Steam Deck verified once again and it seems like it actually runs pretty decently now. Whereas Remnant 2 also got some performance patches too and from some videos I've seen, it seems to run pretty decently on Steam Deck now. Remnant 2 however is still marked as unsupported, so maybe an updated ranking should do. Honestly, these rankings are why some people have issue with Steam Deck verified as a whole and why some people just tell you to ignore those ratings and go to ProtonDB. It's a great resource for figuring out if games actually run well on Linux as a whole. It's primarily meant for Linux compatibility more than performance, but it really does help with anyone that wants to run games on Linux, period. Furthermore, for games that don't work out of the box on Steam Deck, there are fixes detailed by some community members on ProtonDB. Fixes for fixing a game on Steam Deck so that it actually works fine. Things like telling you to run a specific version of Proton GE, or downloading some DLLs or putting in some commands. Now, of course, any game that requires you to do this is generally marked as unsupported for a good reason. But if you aren't afraid of taking matters into your own hand, fixing the game by your own hand, then it's a good resource to visit. ProtonDB, of course, has sections separating the standard PC experience and the Steam Deck experience because they're pretty different, all things considered. I would imagine the website owners would probably add a separate Steam Machine section for any Steam Machine specific ratings or fixes. So all in all, all Valve really said was that the Steam Machine would be easier to verify against. If you're a developer looking to get your game verified for the Steam Machine, it's going to be a bit easier given the hardware is more powerful and also just not a portable device, period. And while the Steam verification system is not perfect, I still think it's a pretty decent general guide for new users. If new users want to be adventurous and get otherwise unsupported games working, then they can do so. But for a new user that may not know how to use computers properly, it's not a bad idea to have them stick with Steam Deck and Steam Machine verified and Steam Machine and Deck playable. 
If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.